Hi everyone, for those of you interested in this flat shaded style, we're going to be taking a quick look at implementing an option for that today. So as you likely know, the lighting of a mesh is calculated based on the normals of the vertices in that mesh. So in order for a triangle to have the same lighting everywhere on its surface, in other words, for it to be flat shaded, all three of its vertices must have normals that point in the same direction. This isn't possible though if a vertex is shared by multiple triangles, since then that vertex's normal is going to be a blend between the direction that those triangles face. So what we need to do is make sure that each triangle has three unique vertices not shared with any other triangle. So instead of having just four vertices making up these two triangles, 0, 1, 2, and 3, which remember would be stored in our triangles array as something like 0, 1, 2, 2, 1, 3. We'd now have six vertices making up these two triangles, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And these would be stored in our triangles array simply as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. To do this, let's head over to the Mesh Generator script and come down to the Mesh Data class. And somewhere near the bottom here, I'm going to create a void method called flat shading. In here, we'll then have a vector3 array, which we'll call our flat shaded vertices. And we can set this equal to a new vector3 array with a length of triangles.length. We're then going to iterate through all of those. So for int i starting at zero, i less than triangles.length. We can say flat shaded vertices i is equal to the vertex from the vertices array with the index referred to by our current triangle. So triangles i. Now we obviously want the triangles array to be updated to refer to the index of the flat shaded vertex. So we just say triangles i is equal to i, since that's the index of the new flat shaded vertex. And then we're just going to want to do the same thing for the uvs. So a vector to array flat shaded uvs is equal to a new vector to array, once again with a length of triangles.length. And we're just going to want to do the same thing that we did with our vertices here. So we say flat shaded UVs, I is equal to UVs with an index of triangles I. Make sure you do that, of course, before we assign a new value to the triangles array. Once we've done that, we'll want the flat shaded vertices and the flat shaded UVs to actually become the uh, vertices and triangles that we use in our mesh. So we can say vertices is equal to the flat shaded vertices and likewise UVs is equal to the flat shaded UVs. Now we're obviously going to need to know if we want to use the flat shading for this mesh. So I propose that uh, when we create a new mesh data uh, object we have to pass in a bool saying use flat shading. And then we can have a bool over here, use flat shading. And we can just assign that in the constructor here. This dot use flat shading is equal to the use flat shading value that's been passed in. And then what I'm going to do is instead of having this bake normals be public, it's going to be made private and we're instead going to have a public method called something like finalize. And in here, we'll say if use flat shading, then we are going to call the flat shading method. Otherwise, we're going to bake the normals. And the reason we're not baking the normals if we're using flat shading is that the entire purpose of the bake normals thing, if you recall, was to uh, get the normals to be consistent when sharing across the edges of mesh chunks. But when we're using flat shading, that's no longer an issue. So we can just use the less expensive built-in recalculate normals when we're using flat shading. So uh, when we get to actually creating the mesh, we'll say, if use flat shading, 
then we can simply say mesh dot recalculate normals. Otherwise, we're going to use our baked normals. All right, then let's just remember to come up here, and instead of calling baked normals, we are going to finalize the mesh data. And we're also going to want to take a bool use flat shading in this generate terrain mesh method, and we will pass that value into the mesh data constructor here, just like so. And now we can save that, and let's head over to the map generator class. So one thing we have to worry about here is our map chunk size. So if we're using flat shading, then we're going to be generating a lot of extra vertices. And remember, Unity has got about a 65,000 vertex cap on a single mesh. So we can't use such a high value, otherwise we are going to exceed that cap. So we need to pick something lower. And uh, if you remember all those episodes ago when we chose this number 239, it was because the number 240 is divisible by all the even numbers up to 12, which helps out a great deal with our level of detail system. Now, the best substitute I could find that isn't going to generate too many vertices is 96. Sadly, that's not divisible by 10, but it is divisible by all the other even numbers up to 12. So let's use that. Remember, we want one less than that value here, so 95. And then let's just create a public bool as well. You can call this use flat shading. And then we'll want to pass the value of that uh, into the generate terrain mesh method. So we've got one reference to that over here. And then down in the mesh data thread, uh, we've got another one. Let's just pass the value in there as well. So let's go into Unity and let's turn on Use Flat Shading. As you can see, we've got this smaller map size and it is nice and flat shaded. Let's also uh, quickly press play, see what this looks like with a whole bunch of chunks generated. You can see it all still lines up correctly and looks pretty nice. Uh, the one thing is with our level of detail, as I mentioned, it isn't divisible by 10, which means that we can use all of these except for a value of 5. Uh, we'll get errors for that. Uh, remember, we are multiplying this value by 2, so a level of detail of 5 means that it's skipping 10 vertices at a time. Now, we'll maybe want to set this up so that if we're not using flat shading, uh, we use the full 239 sized uh, map chunk. So uh, let's just go into the map generator and instead of having this constant int, uh, we can maybe make a little accessor, just a public static int called map chunk size, which is going to have a get. And then if we are using flat shading, then we will return, what is it, 95. Otherwise, we will return 239. Now, of course, this is static, which means we can't access this instance variable without saying exactly which instance of the map generator we're referring to. So let's go ahead and make a a static map generator reference here called instance and all we'll do is say if the instance is equal to null then we can say instance equals find objective type uh, in the scene map generator and then we just say instance dot use flat shading all right um, so now we go into the map generator, use flat shading. If we turn that off, then it will use 239 as the value. All right, that's everything for now. So until next time, cheers.